design to allow parcels to be developed that would otherwise not be developed. It's a bonanza. So let me see. If I get a hundred and ten million dollar direct tax credit, and I, I represent developers, and I, I can say in this case, no credit is necessary. If I get a hundred and ten million dollar tax credit on the cleanup, and I pay ten million dollars for the cleanup, well, that's a hundred million dollar net profit just on the cleanup, and that doesn't yet. So the tax credit is based on what's built there. It's not a percentage of, I see you're looking puzzled. It's section 300 of the New York State tax law, three to 40 to 50, up to at least the value of the direct brownfield tax credit, because that costs GM nothing. Another thing in looking at the settlement, the $875, I think it was $875,000 was referred to in the settlement itself as oversight costs um, rather than a uh, funding for an environmental benefit. And please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, if Nat Barber is still here, but it appears that that stipulation uh, lets, uh, is between the DEC and it lets General Motors has agreed off the hook on the CERCLA law. Essentially, it lets them off the hook for Superfund litigation relating to the offshore portion of the site. So I joined certainly with Riverkeeper in asking that those interim, there, there were 47 potential areas of concern. And we seem to have simplified it down to two hot spots with lead we took care of in the interim remedial measure, one hot spot with stripper TCE in another. And I think we've grossly oversimplified what unfortunately is a, is, is a